Hello and welcome. I'm Sylvia Hartman and I'm here today to talk about toxic positivity, which is a um, recent innovation. And before we start, we do have to make the note, this is in fact an oxymoron. Um, toxic positivity is an oxymoron. But let's get started and just, just have a look what people think toxic positivity is. So let's take a look what the internet reckons. So what is toxic positivity, we wonder? And there's obviously a number of results here from these sites that are being uh, promoted by Google or rather not blocked by Google. And the first one we have here, toxic positivity, is the belief that no matter how dire or difficult the situation is, people should maintain a positive mindset. That's something that, um, okay, I'm going to be definitely wanting to talk about in some detail at some point. In fact, we should do that right now and just point out that um, there are many situations where that may be very dire and a positive mindset is absolutely of the essence in order to thrive, survive, get over it and get something done. For example, if you are in a leadership position such as being the president of a company and the situation is dire and the stocks are plummeting, nobody is served by you starting to scream, oh my God, it's all going to hell, oh my God. Or what if you are a mother of two small children and there is a riot breaking out? What are you going to do? Thrash about and go, oh my God, I'm so scared, oh no. Absolutely not. You take your children by the hand and you say it's going to be all right, we're going to get through this, and we are going to go forward and out and to the car park, find our car and get the hell out of here. So I would really, you know, like to make that point while we're here on the, uh, that there are times and places for a positive mindset, regardless how dire the situation may be. Okay, toxic positivity, definitions, risks, how to avoid and more. And if you look at the date here, you've got the date here, 30th of March, 2021. This is all pretty, pretty new. It's, it's a sort of a, a cyber attack on the mind. Toxic positivity is an obsession with positive thinking. It is a belief that people should put a positive spin on all experiences. Um, no, not necessarily, but let's just move along and see. The dark side of positive vibes. This is brilliant. We define toxic positivity as the excessive and ineffective overgeneralization of a happy, optimistic state. Don't think about it. Stay positive. Positive vibes only. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Oh, so dangerous. And we got toxic positivity is real, and it's a big problem during the now we can guess what that would be. Toxic positivity is the assumption, either by oneself or others, that despite a person's emotional pain or difficult situation. Mm, yes, we can go, we can we can guess where that's going. Po toxic positivity is very real and very annoying. Toxic positivity is positivity given in the wrong way, in the wrong doses, at the wrong time, says David Kessler, a grief expert. Uh-huh. Let's say, okay, move on. To avoid toxic positivity and take the road less traveled. I have, <laughs> I've actually read this article. It's hilarious because it actually contains references to all the studies that prove that happy people actually heal faster, are better balanced, more intelligent, better social functioning, and all the rest of it, which is quite fun. I'll, I'll click on that and just, just, There'll be probably all sorts of things here. There we go. <clears throat> yes, research shows happier people tend to live longer, be healthier, and enjoy more successful lives. 
and very happy people have more of these benefit benefits relative to only averagely happy people. But pursued in a certain way, happiness or positivity can become toxic. Oh, funny. Pursuing happiness may be well, good and bad for our well-being. You really think that? That's that's really what you're saying. Okay. Right, so toxic positivity in the workplace. Okay, fair enough. So it can be the fact, this is this is of course true, that if somebody is very depressed and somebody comes up to them and is, is uh, you know, happy and tries to cheer them up, that that doesn't work. But does that make positivity toxic? Ah, that's something to be debated. Okay. How toxic positivity took over the internet. So that's the 4th of August. That's a few months after the original mention there of the so-called toxic positivity. And so what have we here? We have a nice picture of uh, some smiley faces. That's good. Nice little illustration by Callum Abbott, I can see. And then we have how toxic positivity took over the internet. Stay positive and be kind are the pandemic's most prominent platitudes and pastel-hued Instagram highlights. But here is why an obsession with positive thinking is damaging to our collective mental health. The pandemic has given rise to a wave of toxic positivity. How could positivity, you might wonder, be considered a bad thing? Ah, it's the overgeneralization of being happy or optimistic in all situations, no matter how dire they may be, explains psychotherapist Elizabeth B. Croft. Toxic positivity is similar to the good vibes only mindset where people believe that no matter how difficult or stressful a situation is, one should try and maintain a positive mindset. But it can often be an insincere mindset that causes more harm than good. Toxic positivity is the trend in which we see people avoiding and suppressing the experience of so-called negative emotions like grief, anxiety, and depression in favor of surface level, surface level positive emotions, says Carrera Koenig, culture director at culture director at trend forecasting agency fashion snoops wow i mean there's an expert but yeah okay i'm sorry i'm being a bit snarky here but we've we've got the idea now and so let's um you know just 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 go away from that and go go somewhere go somewhere else let's 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 take that away hello <laughs> i'm big again so yeah, that was uh, what toxic positivity is. It's a it's a warning not to be too positive. It is a um, yeah, it's it's a meme, a uh, mind virus to make people question whether being positive is a good thing. And that's a that that's just such an such an interesting thing, such an interesting thing. So as you know, I come from this school of thought. So here we have the modern energy chart. And this um, is the states of, of, of the energy body as expressed through your emotions. Because emotions are not in the head, they're in the body. And so, you know, they're transmitted from the energy body into the physical body. So we feel them in our body and they create mind body spirit states depending on how well your energy body is functioning and if you have a, have a look at this chart then you can see that we've got um, a, a, a negative side this is where there is an absence of energy an absence of energy the energy body goes low on energy like the battery is going flat and this has these these repercussions, you can see that by around sort of minus three, you start questioning yourself, you become unsure of yourself, you lose your personal power. And this continues down to when stress gets worse, minus five, where you become really fearful and anxious and the stomach starts to churn and the hands start to get sweaty. 
And if nothing is done to alleviate this, then the person will go to minus seven, which is some kind of freak out. They used to call it a nervous breakdown. Could be a panic attack, an anxiety attack, screaming fit, an aggressive attack, aggressive outburst, where people just lose the plot and they start screaming. And you can see many, many videos of this where people are just screaming incoherent nonsense. Um, as they've, they've entered into this minus seven low energy state. Now, following that, which is an emergency generator that is only supposed to be used in a life and death situation, we go to minus eight, which is depression, because the energy body is so depleted, this we have no, you know, lost the will to live. And this is actually a dangerous state for your health because your immune system is compromised. And of course, you are not in a good position to protect yourself or <clears throat> do anything useful with yourself any longer. So that would be the negative side of the energy chart. And then we have the positive side of the energy chart. And as we go up the energy chart, so um, zero is feeling nothing. That's completely pointless. And then sort of plus three, we start to wake up and we have some ideas, but not enough energy to take action. We may think about redecorating or cleaning the kitchen, but that's as far as it goes because we haven't got enough energy to actually turn that into some sort of action. And then the next way up there is plus five. There's inspired action. We have now enough energy to actually take action, not just think about cleaning the kitchen, but to go, yeah, going to do it. I'll put on some music, some happy music, and I'm going to clean the kitchen today. Then we got plus seven, which is probably at the end of the kitchen cleaning when everything is sparkling and clean. You're standing there and go, oh, I did a good job. Brilliant. Wow. Look at me. I've achieved something. And then there is um, a further state if you get even happier for some kind of reason. At that point, that's the plus 10. That's the happiest we can get. And that is sort of happiness. It's a moment of happiness. Perhaps as you turned around in the cleaned kitchen, the sun came in through the window and it struck the sparkling surface and you just realized you just turned your personal realm into this awesome, wonderful, clean machine that is ready to make wonderful meals. That could be a plus 10 moment. So this is how we see positive and negative energy. Negative energy is when you haven't got any, basically. It's like negative money. <laughs> and you have, you know, an overdraft in your bank account. That's how we see things. And then, so, from this, what we say with the positivity is many things. One of them being, number one, if you think about negative things, about your problems, about depression, about misery, about pain and suffering, and particularly about the trauma and all the terrible things that have happened to you, you become more and more depressed, more and more energy, low on energy, more and more miserable, more and more angry. And then you throw a huge tantrum, which is followed by depression. And slowly the energy body starts spooling back up again. And if you're not careful, the cycle will repeat itself over and over and over again. And every time it does, the tantrums get worse. The physical side effects get worse. The depression that follows that gets worse and lasts longer as the energy body is finding it harder and harder to spool back up again. Now, it so happens that when we think about something positive or we engage with something positive, um, and I found just writing down positive words like love and happiness is surprising in its power to make me feel better inside. It's, it's amazing how simple that is. So when we think about positive things and engage in positivity in some way, you know, good vibes, um, happy things, positive memories remembered, looking forward to future goals that have good things in them, 
all of these things, they raise our energy and they make us happier. They make us not just happier, they make us stronger, more resilient, more intelligent, more caring, more socially competent. They make us better people into better versions of ourselves. Now, psychology loves the idea that there, these, these, ha this happiness is only surface level happiness. That's just rubbish. It's, it's bullshit. You're either happy or you're miserable. You're either suffering emotional pain or you are not suffering emotional pain. There is no layering of emotions. You're either this or you are that. Now, it may seem that they're sort of emotions stacked on top of each other, but they're really not. They're sequential. So a happy person comes to a psychologist's office and they're quite happy and the psychologist says, so tell me everything that's been terrible last week. And so this happy person is going down on that chart, on our chart and they're becoming stressed and miserable and so now they're saying, oh, it's terrible. And then something happens. The psychologist might have had a change of heart and said, okay, okay, I can see this is making you really depressed. Let's stop and tell me something good that's happened to you last week. And the person goes, oh, oh yeah, I got promotion at work. It was amazing. There was a party with cake. And so this is sequential. Negative and positive emotions happen to us sequentially as our energy states change. You can't be sad and miserable at the same time. It's just not possible. It's not possible in the way that it isn't possible that you can drive your car forwards and backwards at the same time. It, it's one or the other. And if it seems that there is, you know, more of one than the other, then we might want to look at what is happening there and what's causing this and take some action. And one of the actions that we can definitely take is engage with positivity, with good vibes, with happiness, with strength, with even for the children putting on a good front, even if you don't feel like it, raising that energy through willpower and saying, okay, you know, right, this is a sunny day. Let's go out for a walk together and let's look at the skies, look at the clouds. We might see some animals. We might see some birds. Might be some good experiences out there. Let's go together and do that. And really, that is the mindset of positivity. Um, I need to go back to our modern energy chart here. The whole point of this positivity is that we spend more time on the positive side of that energy chart and less time on the negative side. That is the point. We need to spend more time in better states to retain our mental health and our mental well-being, our self-image, our immune system, our social relationships, our sense of self, everything is reliant essentially whether you're driving your car forward or backward. Now, for the entire trauma industry, everybody who is reliant on their income for making people miserable, focusing them on their traumas, trying to get them to enter into medication programs or long, long, long counseling programs where they sit around and talk about their traumas, which, by the way, hasn't cured anybody of their traumas and their misery. This is something that needs to be added here, is the fact that psychology actually doesn't work. No form of it does. The only thing that's vaguely successful is medication. This is a fact, and, you know, you can look that up and check that out. It, it doesn't actually work long term. 
to gather people around in groups talking about their sadness and their misery. It's not a bucket that's being poured out here. It's a generator. So for people to start adopting a will towards being higher on that energy chart, being happier more often, and actually stating this, this is my will, I want to be happier more often. And then we need to understand that being happier more often is not achieved by spending prolonged times thinking about, focusing on, and entering into negative energy states. In fact, I'm going so far as to say that unless you actually have trauma flashbacks, post-traumatic flashbacks, trying to find some reason for your problems in your past history and thinking that by searching for problems in your past history and somehow solving these problems in your past history, you will all of a sudden wake up and become a happier person is entirely erroneous. It is wrong. It doesn't work. It is a fail. I have no other words to describe that. Now, I'm not saying that we need to be not dealing with our negative emotions. Certainly. Certainly. But let's use some methods that actually work. If you are unhappy, if you are stressed, if you're miserable, let us try, let's use some methods that actually work for that, such as modern energy stopping, star matrix, um, a kind person speaking to you, giving you attention, that sort of thing, you know, stuff that actually works to bring you out of these states of misery. And so, when I hear the word toxic positivity, what I hear is the psychologists are getting terrified that their clients are going to abandon them in droves because working with positive energy is uplifting, it's enlightening, it is really effective, and it works. So that is my thoughts on so-called toxic positivity. By all means, strive to be positive. By all means, strive for a positive mindset. By all means, look at the past things that have happened to you and try and make a positive meaning from this. Because as our friend told us in that article, um, that happy people live longer, they heal faster, they have better relationships, they have more luck, more financial success, and all the things that we want out of life. So I invite you to reject the very idea of toxic positivity. Take it for what it is. It is another attempt to make you scared, make you undermined, try to, you know, put you in that negative state on the energy chart between somewhere between minus three and minus five, where people are gullible, they lose access to their own intelligence, they get scared, they get easily, easily manipulated. And that is really the only use and reason for even the very idea of toxic positivity. So in that sense, In that sense, I'm here and I have my positives at my back. Positive energy, positive intentions, positive goals, retraining our brains to stop filtering all the time for negatives only. Becoming aware how these negative people like the ones that coined the term toxic positivity. These negative people are not going to lead us out of the stress and suffering that we are in. 
that the answer to feeling miserable, feeling alone, feeling unworthy, feeling unloved, feeling depressed, feeling trapped, the answer to that is to achieve higher energy states, to connect with things that you love and that uplift you. And the more you do that, the more your entire person responds with better health, more energy for life to do the things that you need to do, you want to do, to not just be a drain and a burden on the people around you, but somebody who actually got enough energy to contribute to your loved ones, to your family, to your society. Being positive is a good thing. Wanting to be more positive is a extremely good thing. It doesn't mean sticking your head in the sand and you're not sweeping things under any rugs. Human beings aren't rugs. The power of the positives. Positives are all aspects of love. If we want to heal, if we want to get anywhere in life, then what all of us need is more love. We need to be loved more and more often. And this tends to happen when we become more energy high, more attractive, more lovable. It's, it's such a simple thing. So yeah, I reject toxic positivity. And all who would try to take away love and replace it with fear and terror and suffering. I'm saying yes to positivity, yes to wanting to be higher on the energy chart, yes to wanting to be happier. Our happiness matters, and it really does. Thank you very much for listening. Let's do wonderful things. Yes, wonderful things. Powered by love.